Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and we're going to look at LIFO, FIFO, and the weighted average method of valuing our ending inventory. So we have our beginning inventory and purchases for our widgets. So on January 1 we had 8 units in inventory at a cost of $37 each. We made a purchase of 4 units in August and those units cost us $40 each. And then in November 30th, we, produced, we purchased an additional six units at $41 each. It gave us 18 units total available for sale. And by extending our inventory by just taking units times cost, we know we had a total of $702 in inventory. <clears throat> at the end of the year, we have seven units remaining in inventory. So since we had 18 widgets available for sale during the year, and we now have seven remaining, that simply means we sold 11 units. So we need to figure out what the value is of those seven remaining units in inventory. So under a first in first out method, right, we're gonna sell the oldest units first, and so I think of inventory as being in bins. So at the beginning of the year, we had those eight units and that's bin number one then in August we purchased some more and that was bin number two and now in November we bought th six more and those are in bin number three and we're going to use a first in first out and we have to sell 11 units so that we have seven remaining so we would sell all eight out of the January bin leaving none there and then in the second bin I sold eight I only need three more so I'm gonna take those three units out of my second bin leaving me one unit remaining because now I've accounted for my 11 that was sold so that makes the inventory in bin 2 worth $40 we didn't sell enough to have to go all the way to bin three, so I have all six units at $41 remaining. If I take six times 41, it gives me $246. So those are my seven remaining units, and if I add what's left in bin two plus what's left in bin three, gives me an ending inventory value of $286. So now we're going to look at it from a last in first out. Well, January 1 is still, I'm still going to call it bin number 1, bin number 2, and bin number 3 because that's the order we made the purchases, but we're going to go last in first out. So instead of starting down here with bin one, I'm gonna begin with bin three, right, my latest purchase, my last purchased. And I need to account for 11 units. So I'm gonna sell all six units from bin three, leaving me none. Now I'm gonna go back to bin two. I'm gonna sell all four units there because that gets me to 10. I only need one more unit and that's gonna leave me seven in my first bin because I sold six plus four is 10 plus one out of bin one gives me my 11. That gets me to my seven units in ending inventory. So I take my seven times its cost of $37 and that's gonna give me an ending inventory under last in first out of $259. The other option we have is to not track them in terms of when we acquired them, but just kind of lump them all together. And that's when we use a weighted average. So in a weighted average method, all of my inventory is just dumped into the same bin. So I bought units in January, and they went in here. I got August, and they went in here. My November purchase, they all went into the same bin. <clears throat> so 
I need to figure out what was my weighted average cost of inventory. And so when I take my 8 times my 37, 4 times 40, 6 times 41, remember at the very beginning I said that I had 18 units at a total cost of $702. In order to get my weighted average, I'm just going to take my 702. I'm going to divide it by how many units I bought. And that's going to give me a weighted average cost per unit of $39. <clears throat> I had 18 available. I had 7 remaining. So my 7 remaining units on a weighted average cost me $39 each which gives me an ending inventory value of $273. So what we can see is that using FIFO will give you the lowest inventory cost. LIFO will give you an inventory cost that's a little bit higher, but weighted average gives you the highest inventory cost. Which inventory cost method you would choose would depend on the tax situation of the business since inventory is a component of cost of goods sold. So I hope that you found this useful and thanks for watching.